I'm at Super Judge and I'm so blessed. And I just love the word of God. Praise God. So when I found your, find the opportunity to share it with you, it's such a great privilege. It's such a great privilege. And I bless God for this. You know, just like Paul said, he trusted me and put, in, put me in the ministry. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Believe that God will do it and he will give it to you. It's yours already. So it's not a begging thing. It's a demanding thing. Father, join me right now. Say, Father, I demand from you my daily bread right now. It's coming to me because you have given it to me and I receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. You know, there's just the, the healing unction that I sense on me right now. Whatever sickness that you're facing in your body, because while we're praying, I saw someone who's been injured in the leg and that injury have refused to go. It's been on for more than two months now. You've been trying to treat it and it's not leaving. I curse the thing behind that wound. I command it to leave your leg now. For this is an affliction. I command that spirit out of your leg now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. In the name of Jesus. Now listen, today, today, the pus from that wound will stop. And in three days, you will notice that it's beginning to dry up. You are healed. Don't be afraid anymore. Today, you will see the sign. If, if you put your leg down, just stamp it, you will notice that the pain is far reduced because something you see thank you lord jesus there are sicknesses that are not just sicknesses there are demons responsible for it if you don't know this then i'm sorry you're living in fool's paradise there are many sicknesses that demons are responsible for now some of it it's just an affliction that they hit you by, you know. And then, but some, it's, they dwell there. It's, the, that, that kind of sickness is, uh, is magnifying their presence in your life. And so, when you want to deal, and that's, that's why sometimes you're oh God, heal me, oh God, heal me, oh God, heal me. Sometimes you need to bind the devil and cast it out. Satan, I bind you. Get lost. Get out of my body. You don't be, I have not given you rights. So when we minister, sometimes the uh, Lord opens our, open our eyes to see this. It's like Jesus, he, he met that guy who was deaf and mute. And then the Bible said he cast the spirit of deafness out. And when the spirit left, the guy began to hear and he began to speak. So all the while that guy couldn't speak, it was a demon that was holding his speech. See, they interfere with your bodies. But that's not how God created you. I pray for you right now. If there is any abnormality in your body, from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, Kalima Sobre Dehi Kalima Thank you, Holy Spirit. Listen, if there's any part of your body that is a bit deformed, right now, I command the fullness of his growth in the name of the Lord Jesus. Any deformity from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. If your legs, one is shorter than the other, you can stretch them out. And you're going to see the power of God hit you now. 
you can stretch them out. Whatever part of your body that you just feel it's not right, you can place your hand there right now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is doing a walk in you right now. I speak growth to your cells right now, to your tissues right now, to your skin right now. Everything that is connected to the proper growth of that thing. I release that growth now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, that was strong. Praise <laughs> God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Be made whole right now in the name of Jesus from your eyes. Yes, be whole. Be made whole right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Every oppression of Satan in your life. Now, you that is watching me right now. See, I don't want to start teaching on the oppressions of demons or evil spirits. It's, it's, it's a teaching in darkness. But, but the Bible says, those who dwell in darkness, a great light has come. Now, light is the word of God. When light comes, you don't try to explain the darkness. You get out of the darkness. Praise God. How many of you sitting down in dark, in dark place and then suddenly bring light? Now say that, hmm, you see, the way this darkness came. Hmm. Uh, you know, 15 years ago, I was trying to um, do some connection and uh, you get up, be excited, enjoy and make use of the lights. Be explaining darkness. Jesus said to them, do you want to get well? And the problem is that I don't have anybody. Just say, hey, stand up, get up, take up your bed and go home. And he did. There was no explanation. Get up, take up your bed and go home. He got up, realized he could walk. He bent, realized he could bend down to pick up his bed. He put his, his first foot forward. The next one, he realized he could walk. And he went home, praise God. He realized he could find his home, praise God. And that's all, that's all Jesus did and said. So when Jesus gives his command, his command is like light. When it comes, darkness has never and it will never be able to comprehend that light. And guess what? He said, anyone who follows him, Jesus speaking, shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. You have the light of life by the Holy Spirit. And that's why you must never remain in darkness. That's what God is doing in your life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Don't remain in financial darkness. Don't remain in health darkness. Don't remain in darkness where your destiny is concerned. Don't remain in darkness in your business. I don't know what is going on. It's just that every time I arise, something happens. Hey, enough! He sent his word now. Take his word and rule. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise God. All right, now let's go to our theme scripture, Mark chapter 16 from verse 17. Now we talked about the first part, but baptism and, and what the baptism Jesus referred to. Now he says, verse 17, now this is the most important part. And this sign shall follow them that believe. So when you have believed and you are baptized, now I think this should have been paraphrased. This, this should have been phrased, and this sign shall follow them that are saved. You see, because all these signs, it's not just mm, I believe. No, when you are baptized with the Holy Ghost, these signs 
are things that only the Holy Spirit can empower you to do. These signs are telling you that when the Holy Ghost is in you, you have become another man. See, so he says, in my name, they will cast out devils. Because you believe in him and you have been baptized, you are saved. Now you carry with you an authority that every devil that shows up on your way, you have the authority to cast them out, not negotiate with them. Cast them out. Cast them out. Not explain them. Not try, you know, sometimes, you know, we, we go, um, what is your name? My name is this. Where did you come from? How did you enter him? How did you enter? And then we enjoy all that discussion. And people even form teachings from all those discussions. Now, that's a waste of time and a journey into darkness. Because everything that guy is going to say is a lie. Jesus said when he speaks a lie, he speaks his language. For he's a liar and the father of all lies. Lies is language. Lie is his language. It's his mother tongue. When he opens his mouth, it's a lie. It's a lie. Don't take it. Don't take what he says. But here you are. And people begin. Now that's where all those teachings came from. Someone say, oh, I, um, I used to be an occultic person. And now I'm born again. And then I want to give my testimony. When I was five years old. One auntie came to visit me and she gave me sweets to lick. Or she gave me cake to eat. After that, that night when I slept, I, I saw myself going down a tunnel. I couldn't control myself. Then I got to a certain place and I saw this big being who said he's the king of the world. And that if I will follow him, he will make me great. And I followed him. And since then, then he began to tell you all sorts of stories. And then I said, well, we want to attack people. People who sleep in a certain way. They are the ones that are easy for us to attack. And then the pastor will say, ah, brethren, are you hearing? Those people that used to sleep like this. You believe that? <laughs> you believe that? You are believing the devil. You are believing a lie. So we, we begin to tell our children, don't take any gift from a stranger. Don't take any sweet from a stranger. Why? Because not just that you're dealing with a stranger, maybe the stranger will lure them you know, away physically by those things. No, it's more of so that they will not initiate you into a cult. So my child, my child, my child, my child, Will, will receive a gift from somebody and then my child will not know him or herself anymore. And then I'll start saying, hey, there's one demon, he, he received that sweet. Uh, come on now, wake up. Praise God, wake up. See, <laughs> why don't we teach our children? Ah, yeah, yeah. No, no, see, understand me here. See, there's a moral aspect, okay? So when we tell our children, look, be careful how you deal with strangers because they are immature to handle certain things, see? But not in this realm of receiving sweets and things like that. Why don't we teach our children how to bless what they receive? Why don't we teach them that instead? Because we, we teach them faith, right? And by faith, God will bless them. So, for example, if your child is in a, in, in a situation that they need money urgently and they cannot reach you, and I say, don't receive anything from a stranger. And then, then a stranger offers to help. Ah, no, but mommy said, daddy said I should not receive anything. And they can't reach you. No one can reach you. What happens? So why don't we teach the, the, our children rather how to receive and bless what they receive? So they receive that sweet and say, Father, thank you for this sweet. I sanctify it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Isn't that better? I have received it from you, Lord, and I give you thanks. Isn't that better than telling them, look, people do, are initiated by receiving sweet. Don't receive any sweet. Are you hearing me? And then the pastor too in the church say, hey, mothers, are you hearing? All of you that will not teach your children these things. Can you imagine the insult on God's children? And some say, oh, I entered into sexual immorality. I entered into these lies. Of course, sexual immorality is sexual immorality. Just as the name goes, immorality is wrong. But you see, don't magnify Satan in trying to make people live right. And that's where I'm driving at. He doesn't deserve it. Don't scare people. Because those people you're scaring today, a day will come, they will come to one little knowledge of truth. They will have small sense. And the day they have that small sense, they will disbelieve everything you have told them. That's why you don't deceive people. That's why you don't lie to people. That's why you don't keep people in darkness to control them. Because the day they see a little light, it's enough to turn them completely 180 degrees from everything you have told them. Tell them the truth. Tell them the hard way. Tell them to be disciplined. But tell them the truth. So he says, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they will cast out devils. Then he says, They shall speak with new tongues. Remember last week I told you, use the word shall. They shall speak with new tongues. Brothers and sisters, it's not about whether you want to or you don't want to. Jesus said you shall speak with new tongues. Instead of arguing and wondering if tongues is for you or not, why don't you calm down and say, Lord, I'm a believer. Therefore, every sign of a believer is found in me. I manifest it. Is he speaking in tongues? I'm ready to speak in tongues. I'm ready. I say, eh, eh it's just that right from the moment I got born, ah, the people have laid hands on me many times. Nobody needs to lay hands on you. Who laid hands on the disciples? When Peter went to Cornelius and his group of people, they had no idea of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Peter came and, and while he was speaking, the Holy Ghost fell on them. And the Bible said they heard them speak with tongues. And look through the scriptures, you realize that everyone from the day of Pentecost and everyone that the Holy Ghost have fallen upon, the Bible said they spoke in tongues. Now, when they are a group of people, say, all, oh, they all spoke with tongues. Not so. So where did we get this idea from that? And it's not everybody that should speak in tongues. Some people may not speak in tongues. It doesn't mean, brothers and sisters, he said, you shall speak in tongues. You shall speak in tongues. Don't cheat yourself. Don't cheat yourself and come out of hard, being hard in, in your heart. Believe Jesus. He said it. If he said it, then it's for you. You don't need to be taught. You don't need anybody to pray for you. Right now, listening to me, you can just simply say, Lord, now I open my heart and I'm ready for all of it. I'm ready to speak in other tongues. Then open your mouth. The Holy Ghost will fill you. Open your heart and begin to speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. And just, just be free with the Holy Spirit. No hardness of heart. See, you know what? You don't know what hardness of heart has done to you. You are still in church. You are still amongst believers. Jesus rebuked the 11 people who had been with him. They didn't run away from him. They were still with him. They gathered together and Jesus appeared in their midst. Yet, he said, your heart is hardened. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray for you right now. Wherever you are listening to me, if you've not spoken in tongues before, here's an opportunity. Say with me, say, Father, I receive 
your spirit right now. Fill me with your spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, you can open your mouth right now and begin to speak in other tongues. Words will come. It's coming right now. It's on you. Praise God. Just open your mouth and begin to speak it. Receive the Holy Ghost right now and receive the ability to speak in tongues. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. Woo! What, what, what an experience. Now, whatever's going on in your life, I would like to hear from you as you listen to this message. Send us a message. We want to hear from you, rejoice with you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.